everybody. This is Heather Davis. And Chris Davis. And um, we wanted to talk with everybody tonight and get a discussion going because um, recently there's been a lot of public mass violence. And I've spoken out in the past with a, a video that I did on James Holmes about how I said I thought that video games could contribute to mental illness. And I noticed that people that watched it, it was a 50-50 split. They liked it or they didn't like it. And a lot of people rated that video. And I noticed also that InfoWars covered this subject recently and had a lady on there who was talking about the same issue. And they had a 50-50 split on the rating. And this is actually something that my husband and I disagree about. And so we're a 50-50 split and I thought we would talk about some of these issues and we're going to both present our side and then um, we're going to put these articles up on EdenCultures.com and you guys can continue the discussion here on YouTube and on EdenCultures.com. Okay. So do you want me to go first or do you want to go first? I think that you, you're doing a great introduction so far, <laughs> so let me stop you. Okay. Well, I do believe that the images that our brains see and light frequencies, per light that flashes in front of our eyes can affect us. Um, I did hear, you know, when I was a kid growing up in a military family about the military creating um, video games to increase recruiting and, um, you know, all these like black ops type games. And I also have been really open about the fact that I'm concerned about people who are on psychoactive drugs, that, the prescription kind of drugs, because I feel like a lot of them are dangerous um, and they're related to these mass shootings. And th that's not as much of a controversy as the video games, but I think that there may be a connection between those two. And um, so I guess here's my argument, you know, is that it affects our brain. and. If you're on those psychoactive drugs, then my opinion is, you know, if someone is, then they may have a lot of nutritional deficiencies, and that comes into play too. So I want to talk about these articles, okay? This is an article, a Q&A article from MIT, and someone asked an MIT engineer, can brainwaves interfere with radio waves, or vice versa? It would be my more interesting question. Can radio waves interfere with brainwaves? I mean, I'm talking like... The theories about you know mind control these like the um, recent conspiracy theory episode like do video games are they like the new MK Ultra that's something I kind of think about like it just seems like people are being programmed and I know that upsets you all but when you're playing that you know is it affecting your brain and I know you're gonna get a chance to say it honey <laughs> um, and the MIT guy anyway he answered this article basically no um, his basic answer was that brain waves are too low of a frequency for, um, radio waves. There's a big difference, okay? So here we go, you know, it would have to be the same frequency, like two radio stations broadcasting at 89.7 megahertz, they'll interfere. But with a brain wave and a radio wave, there's a huge difference, and he talks about in this article the difference. But what about, like, these ultra low frequency devices that we hear? The, I'm just giving you all the conspiracy theories, okay? I mean, what if there's some wacky connection with video games and the fact that there is technology that is known that can affect our brains, and maybe that's the MK Ultra. Maybe there's not some real person sitting there whispering in these people's ears. Maybe it's just that the software is there, the nutritional deficiencies are there, and it's just this unhealthy environment and these people like snap. So that was one article. There's another article that can show you, okay, like how really these things can affect your brain. And don't get too mad at me. Hang out. He's going to put his view up too. And I told him what my articles were. So Dr. Mercola has one. Unplug. Too much light at night may lead to depression. And he talks about these electronic devices and we're staring at them all the time. They're emitting certain frequency of light. Um, there are different spectrums of light, different colors. They affect our mood and our sleep patterns, our pineal gland, um, our melatonin production, and all that. So check out that article. And then there's a third one by the Boston Globe, Violent Images Affect Young Children. One of my biggest concerns is that there are kids that are playing these games 
and it's affecting them from an early age. And, and so here we have this article from the Boston Globe and a parent is asking, you know, it's a mother, she's concerned because the dad is having the kids play these games and they're having nightmares and here's an answer. And it's, um, there have been numerous studies on the effects of TV and video game violence on children. The American Academy of Child and Adolescent Psychiatry concluded, let me just zoom in a little bit, that children can become numb to the horror of violence, will gradually accept violence as a way to solve problems, and may imitate the violence they see. An influential study done at UM showed that men and women who watched violent TV programming as children were more inclined to show violent tendencies as adults. Researchers at the Kaiser Family Foundation believe that children age seven and younger are particularly vulnerable in the effects of, of viewing violence. And seven is kind of like, from what I know, it is like the biblical age of reason. And before that age, psychologists agree, kids don't understand the difference between fantasy and reality or even sometimes right and wrong. So there's my main points. Um, let me just put it back here. I'm gonna let you take it away, honey. What do you think? Well, I think that there is certainly some validity to the things that you were saying. Um, I don't take exactly the same view naturally. I spent a lot of my time playing uh, video games. I played probably more video games than I care to admit right now. But um, and I certainly haven't done anything crazy. So there are many other people who are fill and fall in the same category. Um, I can vouch for him. He's not a violent. He's not a violent person, but it still concerns me. And I think so. that, that, that you know, they're, they're, you have reason to be concerned about those kinds of things. Um, my uh, arguments were going to be essentially um, ones that I found that were inherently biblical. First off, I do agree with you about nutrition and pharmacology. Um, good nutrition and is very important to a healthy brain as an overdose of pharmaceuticals, SSRIs, and stuff like that will mess with your brain. That's not really anything that I disagree with. Um, now, as far as other points, um, as far as other points, um, we talk about killing versus murder in the Bible, and right. it's really important to think about the initial word used when you talk about thou shalt not kill. Everyone knows thou shalt not kill, but the word used in Hebrew is can be defined in many different ways. Okay, wait, let me explain to them why you're saying this, okay? You're not saying it's okay that these mass killings have occurred. What he's talking about is that I always down him for playing video games because I say, you know, killing someone in a game is like a virtual murder. And it's almost like if he looked at, you know, pornography, I would consider that adultery even though he's not with a real woman. So how is that different? than him killing a real person if he's killing someone in a video game if the Bible says thou shalt not kill. So he is differentiating between killing and murdering. Um, obviously those mass things were murder and that's not what he's talking about. He's right. talking about, you know, is it valid to kill people in video games or whatever. Well, I certainly don't condone um, those kinds of massacres that occurred. Let's just put that out. I would hope they would think that was obvious. Wanted to make sure that they knew, like, the background of what we were talking about. Okay, fair enough. Um, anyway, the point is that there's a, the word used is this one right here, ratsach. I do not speak Hebrew. Um, and it can mean slay, murder, kill, uh, be put to death. And um, this is important because it's used in a wide variety of contexts in Deuteronomy. Um, right after the verse, or in the chapter, one of the chapters fo immediately following the um, Ten Commandments, it's in used to talk about involuntary manslaughter, you know. And then in the next book over, it's used to talk about justifiable capital punishment inflicted on a murderer. So this is three different usages of this same word with very different contexts. So it, it does lend itself to a kind of, of questioning of whether or not this, me, you know, it, it definitely questions whether or not this is a blanket term that can be used like that. So it could mean thou shalt not kill or thou shalt not murder. And if, 
I always was telling him earlier, like, if you interpret it as thou shalt not kill, then that could apply to animals, and you might be a vegetarian, you might not believe in self-defense, whereas if you interpret that commandment, which I'm a Ten Commandment girl, I, I believe that we still I should still follow them, but as thou shalt not murder, then you may be allowed to have self-defense, and you may be, you know, or in defense of others, it may be an okay time to actually kill someone, such as agents of our government do, or, and that brings in the issue of gun rights, too, like, a lot of these, these mass shootings, everyone wants to make it about gun rights, and I think it's a mental health issue, I don't think it's about gun rights, but I have struggled with that, thou shalt not kill, or thou shalt not murder, what is the intent, you know? It's a very good question, um, and that, the violence isn't really the main thing that's really bad about video games, in my mind. In my mind, the thing that's really bad about video games has more to do with slothfulness. The fact that you aren't actually doing anything productive. Now, this is something that video games have in common with both television and movies and a wide variety of tasks. Facebook. Really, yeah, basically. Certainly questionable. Um, but anyway, there are some Bible verses to back that up, too. Uh, one is Proverbs 19:15, and it says, Slothfulness cast into a deep sleep, and the idle person will suffer hunger. Basically saying, if you play too many video games, you're not going to care for yourself. You're not going to feed yourself. You know. And that's okay, so that could tie into my nutrition argument. If, new, if video games are literally such an obsession that they're not eating right, Right. That could, in that way, indirectly increase mental illness. Right. Because I believe nutrition is really, really related to mental illness. But you're saying it's just not like the actual images of the game aren't programming their mind. You're saying that is not occurring in any way. Well, no. What I'm saying is, if that's occurring, that could be that, that could be occurring through not only video games but movies and television too. So you have to really lock but you're all three saying, in there. But you're saying it doesn't occur, and it's okay to kill people in video games. Well, uh, I guess really what I should say is then, based on my arguments previously, no, it's not okay to kill all people in all video games. But if the video games mimic justifiable murder then that ends up being in a different category. So if, if it was a hunting video game, I don't think that there would certainly be a problem at all because you're killing animals. And, you know, okay, so you're agreeing with me that the virtual act is just as bad as the real act, but you're saying that thou sh that the commandment itself should be interpreted thou shalt not murder, so the virtual act of killing isn't necessarily bad, because you're not murdering, even though the virtual act of killing might be the same as, you know, the real act of killing. It's, or the virtual act of murder. So people that do go in these crazy games and they just murder, 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 are you saying they're murderers? Like, is that what you're saying? So what's your argument? See, like, I, I, are I, they I, or aren't look, they? Look, I don't know. It's a very difficult concept you're getting at here because the people inside the games, they don't actually feel any pain. They don't actually have any families. They don't right. have any actual real world consequences outside of the game. You know what I mean? So it's very difficult to, to compare those two. Well, I now, think back to my whole thing that it's like the new, that this is NK Ultra, okay? These games are, especially when kids start playing them really young, they eat these low cholesterol diets, so their brain is just like starving, low saturated fat, and they're just seeing these like images flash before their eyes, they're getting mercury injected into them, but it ends up being about mental health and it's one piece of the puzzle. I don't think it just is the only sole cause, but people should consider that. So, okay, so is Men there anything redeemable about video games? Okay, well... A couple things. Number one, men have been killing themselves long before video games came about, and children have been playing Soldier and stuff like that long before video games came out. So <laughs> you I mean, mean killing each other? Men have been killing each other too, right? Men have been killing each other long before video games came out, and children have been mimicking killing each other before video games came out. You know. What so I mean? is there so, any point to playing a video game? If, well, there I mean, are some redeemable qualities. If we can just get to that, I just felt like I needed to inject that one first because. It's not like video games are the exact source of all these problems. They represent... The violence in the video games does reflect the violent nature of our society today. And so, that, yeah, you're not telling me that there's anything good about video games. Well, there are some <laughs> things that are good about video games. In fact, these people right here that I'm about to talk about have proven that 
that uh, there are studies that show how violent video games helped improve social development in autistic children. And playing video games can teach uh, them how to respond to um, social stuff. I know that for- Okay, you just saw my jaw drop, right? Violent video games teaching autistic children social development? Does that whoa, not whoa, sound whoa, like whoa, Adam Lanza? Whoa. I'm not trying to be like faux pas here or taboo or whatever, but didn't some guy just get his Facebook account deleted for posting a picture of Adam Lanza, the, the shooter of this horrible elementary school shooting, saying a 20 year old autistic kid who plays video games, blah, blah, blah. So it sounds like, I'm sorry, when you read that, I did not think, I mean, yes, it would be good if a video game was like, you know, here's how you tie your shoes, or, you know, let's learn to deal with our well, emotional pain, but it, it's not. It's a violent video game teaching them social stuff? Like, that's I don't not think, a good I don't argument. think it's. I don't think it's a violent video game. I think this is actually okay, a you different said video violent, game. Okay, you said violent video games teach artistic children social skills. Well, maybe that's because I've drunk too much. Which is sad because I've only had one drink, so I guess okay, that really shows Okay, read it correctly this time. Okay. Oh my gosh. It says, I playing, like, playing video games can teach them how to respond to visual and verbal cues, greatly improving social responses. And this is talking about autistic children, so. Okay, so, and I do agree that, I, I was kind of baiting you a little there with that because there are obviously positive benefits. Like I play Just Dance 3 and I get my sweat points in. I try to five days a week. You know, I've got UFC trainer and I play these exercise games, and so obviously that has to do, that's more hand-eye coordination than it used to be even with the controllers. But, you know, why aren't there more positive video games out there? Why is it that, you know, even the Lego games that we buy our seven-year-old son, you know, which I think are more age-appropriate than Halo or whatever, they're still knocking the guys apart, destroying them. Like sometimes, yeah, the Lego guy will build a bridge, but it's like, oh yeah, it's not blood and guts, he just, spreads apart or angry birds like i equate those to suicide bombers the angry birds are mad at the pigs well who could that be construed at i don't know american pigs or something who knows and they're killing themselves you know what i'm saying right. so why aren't there more positive ones like i'm a homeschooling our kid i want him to have a video game like magic school bus you know why can't he go inside like a human body and learn about digestion or or the common cold. Because for one of person like you, there's 10 people out there who are young 18 year old males and they want to buy a video game where they end up killing other people online with the latest in military technology. And are those the guys that are committing these mass shootings? That's the question. I, you know, I mean, I are the mass shooting guys all out of that group, but not all of that group are mass shooters. What do you think? That's a distinct possibility. I don't know, but it is a distinct possibility. But are you going to continue playing violent video games? I mean, be honest here because I am married to you, so be honest. I'm trying not to, but I'm tempted sometimes. Okay, so yes, just go ahead and say the next time I hang out with my brother, we're going to play violent video games. Like, I know he is. So you can't, how do you rationalize that, like, you're not going to, like, what's the difference between you and them? Like, you think it's just the nutrition, the mental illness? Well, I think it's also the social connectedness, too. I mean, these guys, both, all these guys, that when you look at them, they are literally al the loners. They don't actually connect with anybody else in the world around them. And it's and important. And video games contribute to that. Like, these guys well, could they... be playing their online games and considering that their social time. Well, they, they, they could be, um, you know, but... Once again, there were loners and stuff like that, and there certainly were murderers before there were video games. You know what I mean? So you can't just say it's all video games. Yes, they might contribute, and yes, they might be an outlet, and yes, they might have all this in common. So that article all... that I read about the young children, like, do you at least agree with me on that? Yes, about the young, children young, children, shouldn't... young children are impressionable, and they shouldn't be watching really any violence or any intense sexuality. Those I are think adult topics. I agree with those that article, especially under the age of seven. So okay, so this is me versus him. We're gonna put this up on EdenCultures.com. Do you feel like you got all your points out? 
think so. Yeah. I feel like I got all my points out. I know this is a 50-50 split. Like, dislike, whatever. I wanted to get the conversation going. I'm being honest about my opinions. You know, so you're going to keep playing violent video games every now and then. But are you agreeing to not play them in front of our son? Yes. Okay, you guys are all my witnesses. Remember to keep your eyes peeled, your brains perked, and your soul on the straight and narrow.